Well, first of all, uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, hopefully you're in the right place. We're going to be speaking about the augmented education programs. Um, and we have two streams of programming. One is the Construction Craft Worker Foundations Program, um, A106, and the Culinary Skills Preparatory Training Program, A110. Um, so today's presenters, um, I will be giving the presentation today. My name is Alexis and I'm the program assistant for the augmented education programs, uh, but also joining me today and moderating our chat and questions is Suzanne DeFreitas, who is our program manager. Um, did you want to say a quick hello, Suzanne? Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Wonderful. All right, so let's get started. Um, today's presentation um, will go over a number of different things regarding our two programs. Um, we'll talk about program requirements and the different supports that are available through our programs. We'll also uh, talk about the two programs in much more detail. Uh, we'll talk about all of the different courses and certifications that you're able to um, take through each. And then we'll talk about what our application requirements and what our selection process looks at like for our two programs. Um, at the very end, there will be some time uh, for question and answer period. However, if you have any questions during the course of the presentation, Suzanne uh, will be the moderator and can answer questions um, as we go along. Okay, so first and foremost, what is augmented education? Um, we also refer to it as the Aug Ed program for short. Um, so Aug Ed is a supportive employment focused program, and they are specifically designed for individuals that have complex mental health histories or addiction histories. And the whole purpose of our program is to help our students prepare for find and maintain employment in one of our two industries, either the food service industry or the construction industry. Um, these programs were developed out of a partnership that we had uh, with the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. Um, although we don't have any CAMH staff working with us in our program, um, they continue to help and support us and also refer a number of our students to the program. Okay, so program requirements. First and foremost, in order to apply to our program, you have to have um, some kind of mental health or addiction history. Um, we're pretty flexible um, in uh, what that looks like. Sometimes uh, some people do not have a formal diagnosis and that's okay as well. Um, if you uh, strongly believe that you do uh, fall under uh, this category, you are more than welcome to apply for our program. Um, the other piece is that you have to have um, eligibility to work in Canada and be an Ontario resident. So unfortunately, our programs are not available for international students. Uh, and the last piece here is regarding educational background. Um, so as long as you have your Ontario secondary school diploma, or you meet mature student status, which is uh, anyone who's 19 years of age or older, um, you are able to apply for our program. So um, again, that would be anyone who's 18 years of age and has uh, their OSSD can apply, um, and anyone over 19 years of age can apply as well. Uh, some other pieces uh, to highlight about our program um, is that our program is completely um, free of cost. So tuition is completely covered. All of the supplies and the tools that you would need in order to complete our program are also provided to you. And you actually get to keep those items upon graduating from our program. So we would be giving you a uniform. Um, we would give you all of the tools that you would need in the labs. We also cover transportation. So um, when you're registered into our program, you would be given a Presto card. We would fill that up with a TTC Metro Pass if you're coming in um, through uh, the Toronto area. Um, but if you live outside of the Toronto area, we also fill up a Presto card for your Go Transit trips to and from class. Um, and last but not least, um, part of our program is done online. So if you do not have a laptop or stable internet access and you need those items in order to do online learning, they are available to rent um, from us in um, our department. 
So pretty much we cover um, everything. The only thing we really uh, don't supply is a backpack um, and writing utensils, but everything else is provided for our program, which is uh, really awesome and unique to our, our two programs. Program supports and accommodations. Um, what makes our program very unique, and in fact, it's the only program of its kind in all of Canada, um, is that it is highly accessible and highly supportive. And so um, our, our program delivery um, and our, our teaching style is, is UDL based. And so if you haven't heard that term before, UDL stands for Universal Design for Learning and essentially means it's highly accessible, highly um, adaptive to a, a multiple um, learning styles um, and learning needs. So how that looks like in our program is that uh, we have three job coaches that work within the augmented education department, and they are pretty much your support system throughout the program. So what that looks like in terms of classroom is that um, in each class, you would be given a instructor or professor. Those are your industry experts and they're going to be teaching you the knowledge and the skills that you need for the industry. But in addition to the instructor, you also have uh, one of the job coaches um, in each class that provides additional supports. Um, our job coaches wear a number of different hats. So uh, some of the different supports that they provide are in-house academic accommodations. So if you need something specific in order to be successful in the program, we are able to provide um, that for you. Um, we're also able to provide coaching and employment support. This is uh, throughout the program. As we are an employment focused program, the job coaches would be um, providing feedback and coaching uh, throughout so that you are employment ready by the time that you graduate um, from our training here at George Brown. And last but not least, our job coaches are pretty much uh, a lifetime commitment to you. So even if you uh, graduate from our program and several years down the line, you need some help um, with employment, whether that's sprucing up your resume uh, or finding a new job, you can always come back to um, our our program and uh, ask for those additional supports. The job coaches are able to provide you um, with those services as long as you would like to access them. Okay, so now I'm going to talk um, in more detail about each of our programs, starting with the culinary skills program. Um, it is an eight month long program, so it will run from the beginning of September to the end of April each year and we'll have a work placement component um, that most of our students do over the summer. Um, our programs just got changed into a new uh, learning format. So um, it is now being offered as a blended learning format, which is pretty much a combination of online lectures and in-person practical labs. So it is a full-time program. It requires a commitment of about 30 to 35 hours a week of um, instruction. You will have your theory courses that would be delivered online in a very similar setting uh, that we're, we're set up in right now. Um, you will also have uh, your culinary labs, which would take place at our chef school building at George Brown College, um, which is 300 Adelaide. Um, and in those labs, you'll actually be putting um, your skills and your technical skills into uh, use and preparing um, actual meals and recipes. Um, a note about um, in-person labs is that uh, due to COVID-19, we have taken a number of different measures to ensure that you are safe and, and the whole class is safe. So uh, we have uh, social distancing measures in place. We have reduced number of students in uh, classrooms at a time. And we also, um, we also uh, strongly enforce um, wearing non-medical masks and uh, making sure that um, everyone feels safe in the kitchen environment. So that's an addition um, to what uh, we normally do um, as a result of COVID-19. 
Um, and lastly, we do a number of different soft skills workshops. Um, these are where we teach um, people skills, which are the skills that you need not only to get a job, but to keep a job. Um, so we, I'll speak to this a little bit more, but um, essentially there is a course called field integration where we cover a number of these um, different skills, such as teamwork, communication, conflict resolution, um, and a lot of different personal success strategies to be a student and also to be employable. Um, in order to graduate from our program, all students must complete 150 hours of work placement. Um, this is a completely supported process. So the job coaches in our program would be working with you one-on-one -on -one, um, in order to find a work placement um, that would be a good fit for you. And lastly, once you graduate from the program and complete your work placement, um, most of our graduates are qualified for entry level food preparation jobs. Um, a number of them work as kitchen assistants, as prep cooks, line cooks, um, working in catering operations, fine dining. Um, some even decide to start up their own business. So there's a number of different um, avenues that you can take after completing our program, um, but essentially we're providing you with the foundation. Um, to start from um, the, the bottom and work your way up. Okay. Here's an overview of the different culinary skills courses. Um, this is a two semester program. So you'll see on the left side of the screen um, is all of your first semester courses that will run from September to December um, and your second semester courses, which run from January to April. Um, they're also listed here based on the type of course that they are. Um, so you'll see that semester one has many more uh, online courses um, as opposed to your practical courses. Um, and then when we move into second semester, there's a lot more of that, the hands-on practical labs that you would be involved in. Um, I'm not gonna go uh, through each of these uh, courses um, in detail, um, but as I mentioned, you'll see in both first and second semester, you'll have field integration workshops. So that's with employability and success strategies in, in those courses. We have math upgrading, sanitation, which is your food handlers certification. Um, and we also have a baking um, component of our program as well. So um, you do get your bake theory as well as to bake labs that you get to um, practice your skills with. Um, in the second semester, you have uh, nutrition, um, food, beverage, and labor cost control is about culinary management and um, particularly important if you're looking at starting uh, your own business. Um, and then we have a number of different uh, practical labs, um, such as butchery, um, cafe production is a large quantity meal preparation, so very catering based. Um, and then we have um, a one day certification for emergency first aid and CPR. So here's some pictures of some of our culinary students in action. Um, we used to run a number of different events prior to uh, COVID-19. So some of these pictures are taken from those events. Um, you'll also see here uh, pictures of students working in the culinary labs at George Brown. And um, all the students that uh, graduate um, from our program are, are going to receive an Ontario College certificate. You also receive three different certifications um, that look really good on your resume and um, are important in order to get a position in the, in the industry. So you'll have your food safety training, which is your food handler certification. You'll also have your emergency first aid and CPR. And lastly, your WIMIS um, certification. So the workplace hazardous materials and understanding um, the different um, possible um, areas for concern or chemicals that you might uh, be working with that you will need to know how to um, safely handle. Okay. Moving on to the construction craft worker program. This is a shorter program than the culinary program. So it's about five months long and it runs from the beginning of April to the end of August, plus um, a work placement component that is usually done in the fall. 
Um, again, it is a blended learning format, so very similar structure to our culinary program. Same kind of commitment, 30 to 35 hours a week. You'll have online classes, construction uh, labs and workshops that would take place at our Casa Loma campus at George Brown. And again, those soft skills workshops that you'll be doing in field integration. Um, the construction students do a little bit more uh, for their work placement. It's 160 hours. And again, this is a supported process where the job coaches in our program would be working for, with you to find a good fit um, for where you can do your placement in the industry. And most of our graduates are qualified for entry level general labor positions. So we have graduates working in a number of different areas. The construction field is quite um, vast and extensive. So there are a number of different uh, niches that you can choose to go um, into following our program. Um, but in general, most of our students end up being general laborers in some capacity, either working in construction sites, um, working in residential or commercial um, environments. Um, some even decide to work in warehouses or um, in construction retail as well. So a number of different options again to to take after our program. So our construction craft worker program is only one semester long. Um, it's a little bit longer than the traditional semester. So it's about 20 weeks long and it runs from the beginning of April to the end of August. Um, here you'll see that you have your math upgrading. So you'll have a, a foundations math as well as a industry-based math specific to construction. Um, their plan specs and calculations is a blueprint reading course. And then um, our, our construction program is very much hands on um, and has many, many more um, lab courses. Um, so you will be mostly working in the labs in our program, again, um, with uh, special um, adherence to COVID-19, um, social distancing um, and safety rules in place in those labs. Um, so again, you'll have your, your first aid. Um, you will have construction site safety tools and equipment, which um, essentially gives you all of the safety and the, the basics around working on a construction site. Concrete work, scaffolding and hoisting. Um, so there's a number of different things that are in there, um, but you'll be working um, with uh, some masonry, working in um, the carpentry labs, um, understanding pretty much how to create a small uh, house from, from the bottom up. Um, and construction site works is where um, you would continue that um, and work with a lot of the industry uh, based machinery um, that you would find working on a job site. And last but not least, in terms of our practical courses, um, there is a metal cutting course um, where we would look work with the oxy material and understanding how to safely cut um, different types of metal. Okay, and, and this slide has a couple of pictures of our construction students in action. So as you see here, there are students working with um, stationary uh, construction equipment like the saws. Um, we have some students um, in the left uh, bottom corner that are working um, with wood. Um, so we do have uh, a lot of woodworking projects that are integrated into our program. Um, in the middle there, one of our students is working in um, with one of our renovation techniques based uh, courses, so working with drywalling um, and how to, to safely set that up. And uh, at the bottom there on the right hand corner, um, we have some masonry that you would get um, experience working in in our labs as well. Okay. One of the wonderful things about our program um, in the construction program is the number of certifications that are offered. All of these certifications are free of cost, so there's no additional cost to you in order to complete these. Um, so uh, you will get your working at height certification, working um, in elevated platforms, so above ground, um, and understanding the safety involved with that. Um, propane safety, power actuated tools, asbestos awareness, which is a, a theory based training, um, work site traffic control, forklift safety. One of the, the greatest uh, certifications that comes out of this program is learning how to operate a forklift. 
which can be used um, on the construction site, but also in warehouses as well. Um, and then again, your emergency first aid and your WIMIS is involved um, in the program. And all of our students that are successful in their courses and are eligible to graduate um, will obtain a Ontario College certificate. Okay. Um, moving on now to our application requirements and, and how um, this looks, um, we have a very different uh, application uh, process than um, most college programs. So um, you do not have to apply through OCAS online, you would be applying directly to us in the Augmented Education Department. Um, so we have set uh, two application deadlines for our programs each year. Um, you'll see them here on the screen. Um, so our culinary programs application deadline is July 5th of this year, and our construction programs deadline is February 6th of 2022. Um, and so as long as you apply and provide um, all of your paperwork by those deadlines, you are considered for our program. A completed application package includes three of the following things. So first and foremost, there is an application form. Um, this is available on the uh, Augmented Education webpage, um, or you can request it by email. Our email is augad at georgebrown.ca. So this is essentially a four or five page form um, asking you some questions about your interest um, in the program. The second piece of your application package is your resume. So this includes uh, work experience, any volunteer experience, um, educational background. Even if you don't have much experience in um, construction or culinary uh, and you're looking to get into the industry, please list any uh, background work that you've done prior just to give us a sense of um, what you've been doing. We're aware that a lot of people uh, switch careers um, or decide to go a different avenue. So we just wanna see what your employment history looks like and um, what you've been doing prior to applying to our program. And last but not least is the letter of support. This is a one page letter that should come from either a healthcare professional or community support worker. And it's essentially a reference letter of why they would recommend you for our program. A lot of our applicants end up having letters written by their family doctors, case workers, occupational therapists, social workers, um, those types of supports um, who are familiar um, and have supported them with their mental health or their addiction. So we're not looking in this letter of support, we're not looking for medical documents. We don't need um, them to disclose um, too much about your diagnosis, uh, but um, it should give us a sense of why you would be a good fit for our program. And the last note here that I would like to make is that because of COVID-19, the only way that we are able to accept applications at this time is by email. So um, once you have all three of these components of the package, um, please send them to auged at georgebrown.ca. Um, I will um, attach or, or send the link to where you can get the application form specifically. I'll do that at the end of the presentation. Um, and then our selection process. So once the application deadline has passed, our uh, program uh, staff will review all of the applications that we received, and we would invite you to participate in three intake assessments. And these assessments are um, essentially for us to see if you are a good fit for our program. So the three assessments are the following. We do an academic assessment, which is um, a reading, writing, and math-based um, assessment. Um, very typical to uh, a standard placement test where we're looking to see um, where you stand in each of those areas. 
Um, the second assessment, uh, this has been changed recently as a result of COVID-19. Uh, prior um, to COVID, we used to do a skills assessment. Um, it's looking like we still won't be able to do skills assessment for a while. Um, so we've supplemented that with a technology assessment. Um, and this is where we would um, evaluate and, and see how your computer skills are, if you're able to do some basic functions um, and know how to work with um, some basic software like Microsoft Office Suite um, and following instructions that we provide to you. So that's the technology assessment. And last but not least is a virtual interview. Um, we would invite you to a Zoom interview with our staff, um, and this would be an opportunity for us to get to know you a little bit better, um, ask you a couple of questions about uh, why you're interested in our program, and also um, what kinds of um, needs or, or even questions you have for us regarding our programs. Okay, so it's a it's a quite an extensive um, process, um, but these three assessments are are here um, for us to be able to evaluate um, who would be a good fit for our program each year. Whether you are successful or unsuccessful, we will notify you and let you know of our decision. So you will um, be advised whether or not you're being accepted into the program or not. Um, and all accepted students will be invited to a program orientation that we would do before the first day of classes so that you have everything you need and a good understanding of how uh, the program will be delivered. And that is the end of um, my presentation. Um, and I'd like to thank you for, for listening. Um, here I have a couple of uh, ways that you can contact us. So we're reachable by phone, by email. Um, our website here is listed. So if you actually go to georgebrown.ca um, forward slash augmented education, that's where you can find our application form as well as our application deadlines. There's also some more detailed information about our program there that you can read about as well. And we also have, um, we're on social media. So we're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So we often provide updates um, and photos and, and cool things that we're doing in our program if you'd like to follow along um, and kind of see what, what we do behind the scenes as well. Um, so at this point, um, I will open it up for any questions um, that you may have. Um, but if not, um, if you feel that you got all of the information you need, um, you are free to leave the session. And hopefully um, today's presentation gave you a good sense of, of what uh, to expect for our program. Um, and hopefully we receive an application package uh, from you uh, for whichever program you're interested in.